Hello all you visitors to Musicopolis. Uh, today, uh, this video is probably going to be the last one that I'll be sending your way. After all, the festival has now come to an end. And I just want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of my life in Musicopolis uh, the last few weeks and uh, hope that you've enjoyed your visit. I would like to uh, respond to some of the questions that Group 6, uh, the modern period group, ha has asked me. And uh, first of all, I'd like to respond uh, to Arntia and to William Taylor, uh, who were wondering uh, why weren't there more black uh, composers in the modern period? And who were they? Well, perhaps the most uh, important uh, black composer of the 20th century uh, was a man by the name of William, William Grant Still. Uh, he wrote a very famous symphony called the Afro-American Symphony in 1931. Now, there are more African-American composers alive today now composing. Some of my dear friends uh, are African-American composers, uh, but time will tell. Uh, to see uh, if they become part of our legacy into the 21st century. Uh, another reason why so few African American composers are really a part of the modern music scene has to do with the fact that uh, so much of modern music was so complicated that one had to go on to graduate schools and get that kind of an education in order to write the music that was being done. And uh, for so many African Americans living in this country uh, in the 20th century, uh, that was just not an opportunity that they had uh, available to them. Uh, sad to say, uh, we, uh, this country has certainly uh, had a long legacy of abuse of, of nearly half of its citizenry. Nevertheless, if you uh, want, please uh, do a Google search on William Grant Still and his Afro-American Symphony. You might even be able to hear some uh, video uh, sound clips uh, on YouTube. Uh, Jacob and Fiona wanted to know what the 20th century uh, will be called. I mean, it, we really can't call it modern anymore. <laughs> and I think that it's going to take a few years, maybe a couple of decades, before we have a chance to really sit back and and look at the 20th century. It's historians with their 2020 hindsight that give these labels to historical periods. I mean, when Beethoven was composing his music in the 1800s, uh, he saw himself as a modern composer. Uh, so did Mozart. He thought that he was writing the, the latest stuff on the planet. Uh, so uh, in contemporary existence, we label whatever it is modern. But it's only after uh, times between style changes uh, that historic, historians can look back and say, oh yeah, these were the characteristics that separate the modern nowday period with what went on in the 20th century. Uh, the fact that you're having uh, your own questions uh, about uh, what we're going to label the 20th century, uh, you're in, in a pretty good boat because all of the arts refer to uh, contemporary art, be it music, painting, uh, sculpture, whatever, as really being post-modern. And some people refer to themselves as post-postmodern. Well, let's just give some people, uh, historians, a chance to sort it all out but certainly the modern period has been one of the one of the most uh, varied of all uh, musical styles uh, of all time so who knows what it'll be called <laughs> uh, the kaleidoscopic music i do not know uh, blondie wanted to know why uh, aaron copeland chose uh, billy the kid as the subject for his ballet well, Aaron Copland was one of a number of American composers who felt a real commitment to uh, the average citizen, the common man in America during the 1930s and 1940s. In particular, uh, the 1930s was a period of the, the Great Depression. It was a very difficult uh, decade uh, for, for most people, uh, difficult to eke out a living. 
and uh, many people were disappointed in the in capitalism uh, and uh, and they were disappointed in the country and everything. So what Copeland wanted to do was to give Americans uh, something to rally around, if you will, a regional flag or an American flag. And so he chose to write pieces during the 1930s and 1940s uh, that featured certain aspects of Americana, certain things that were distinctively American. And Billy the Kid, well, he was uh, one of our so-called American heroes. It seems that so many of our heroes from the 19th century uh, were outlaws <laughs> and uh, he was writing for the average uh, citizen in, in America and his music doesn't sound modern modern like Schoenberg or Stravinsky or other composers no he was writing for the common man and um, that's the reason why he chose that as one of the topics subject matter of one of his ballets Andrea wanted to know why Libby Larson was the only woman uh, who uh, was to be found in Musicopolis uh, during the modern period. And uh, she's not alone in her question. Uh, some other others of you wanted to know about why weren't there more, more women composers. And indeed, it probably has to do with the fact that in terms of the 20th century, uh, there were far fewer women composers than men composers. Now. I can tell you uh, point blank, the number of women composers uh, who have, are active today or certainly who have been active over the last 40 to 50 years has significantly increased. And uh, perhaps if uh, I talk to Dr. Carroll and have him revise this course in the next year or two, I might ask to encourage him to, to add a few more women composers. Uh, they certainly are out there and many have made wonderful contributions. Donnie uh, wanted to know what changes have happened uh, most recently in modern music, particularly uh, over the last 20 years. And I suspect that his uh, question arises out of the fact that uh, his place on this planet uh, has been the last two decades, as uh, has been the case for most of you. Well, I can assure you that uh, things have moved away from the intense ugliness uh, to where composers are embracing beauty once again. And I know I had a chat with Dr. Carroll, and he was saying that once he got tenure, uh, he decided he didn't have to write ugly music anymore. And he s felt that there was too much ugliness in the, mu in the world today. Why add more ugliness to it? So he, among other composers uh, right now, currently contemporary, uh, 2009, are writing music that's less ugly, less intense, and we want to come back to embrace beauty once again. Well, it has been my absolute pleasure uh, to have had you in my life uh, the past five weeks or so. I want to wish you all the very best. Have a wonderful summer and a most productive and happy, wonderful life. Take care. Bye now.